Hey AirZoo fans, Troy Thrash, CEO of the AirZoo, coming to you from the Tyler Little Family Foundation Archive and Collections. I'm here today with our Collections and Exhibits Coordinator, Christy Kincaid, and we are here to bring you AirZoo Artifacts Uncovered. The first artifact we want to show you is certainly one of my favorites in the collection. It is a lunar planning chart developed and released by NASA in May of 1971. So it's a really cool lunar map and being a space guy I love really cool lunar maps. But this one is extra special because it was signed by one astronaut from every Apollo mission that landed on the moon in the area where they landed. So let's take a closer look and explore this really cool artifact. So first, on July 20th of 1969, Buzz Aldrin, by the way, that was 50 years ago, very soon, Buzz Aldrin became the second man to land on the moon. He was the lunar module pilot, and they, of course, landed in the Sea of Tranquility. Less than a year later, Alan Bean, he became the fourth astronaut. He was the Apollo 12 lunar module pilot, and they landed in the Sea of Storms. Next was Apollo 14. Edgar Mitchell, the lunar module pilot, landed in Frau Mauro, and that is the area where Apollo 13 was due to land before their accident sent our, those uh, astronauts back home. David Scott, as the Apollo 15 commander, became the seventh man to walk on the moon, and they landed in the lunar Apennine range. Charles Duke, in April of 1972, became the tenth and youngest astronaut to walk on the moon as the Apollo 16 lunar module pilot near the Descartes crater. And finally, Gene Cernan became the 11th astronaut as the Apollo 17 commander. They landed in the Taurus Mountains. Gene Cernan, who also visited the Air Zoo a few years ago, is certainly noted for the fact that he was the last man on the moon in 1972. Chrissy, this is an amazing artifact, and I'm sure very rare. How did we even get this here at the Air Zoo? This was donated to the Air Zoo in 2012 by an avid space collector uh, and he donated uh, quite a bit of space artifacts for us to house and display. So he and others really entrust us to keep these, to store mm -hmm. these, to preserve these yeah. for future generations. So I imagine there's got to be some challenges there. What does it really take to preserve something yeah, like this? So something this big, it's pretty difficult uh, to preserve, but we keep it in a flat file drawer. Every time we handle an artifact, especially paper, we wear gloves. That way it'll keep the oils from our hand and the dirt from our hand from transferring onto the paper um, for any or from any artifact. Uh, and then we also keep it in acid-free tissue paper, and that just allows the dirt particles in the air uh, to stay off of the artifact. Hmm. So, Christy, I want the whole world to be able to see this. Certainly yeah. our community, everybody who walks through the air zoo doors, we certainly can't just put it up and allow people to come and see it and touch it and all that. So what are our options in terms of really being able to share this incredible piece of history with our community? Yeah, so we are actually having it digitized um, over the next couple of weeks, and um, it can be found in our Apollo 11 exhibit that will open up on July 10th. Well, you heard it here, July 10th, you're going to get to see a digitized version of this amazing artifact, and I will tell you, it's been great, Christy, thank you so much for hanging out here. I look forward to coming back with our next episode of AirZoo Artifacts Uncovered.